I am Dr. Rosemary, Professor Rosemary, whatever you want to call me. Um, and I am very happy to be here today, continuing this conversation about identity, which is something that I haven't really thought about before, but is as I think about it, I'm realizing that I have made choices about who I am. I continue to make choices about who I am. For instance, um, I was married um, and got divorced 24 years ago. And my ex-husband who lives 1,500 miles away, has lived 1,500 miles away for this whole time, uh, married someone else very quickly. And so he and his new wife of 24 years um, have, you know, I have lived far, far away from them. And I learned yesterday that for some reason, nobody can figure out. He and his wife have just bought a house online, sight unseen, uh, about 20 miles away from me. <laughs> Interesting. It's not about me. I mean, they've, you know, it's about our daughter and our grandchildren uh, and why his wife decided to move here and become part of the family of her husband's daughter, as opposed to staying 1,500 miles away close to her children and being part of their families. I don't know. But in a month, um, they are going to be like almost neighbors. And so, A, I'm in shock. <laughs> I, th I thought that chapter of my life was done, and it's not. Um, and my, I am finding my, act, my reactions very interesting uh, and realizing, okay, who am I? in regard to this change in my life? How do I see this happening? Is it a problem? Is it a gift? Does it bring possibilities? Well, I can't give you the answer yet. I'm working on it, but I, realize that I have certain thoughts about my identity and who I am. Who is the I that I have created with the values that I've chosen and the decisions that I've made in my life? And how do I see my response to this new situation fitting in to who I am. It's, you know, I wouldn't have, I, I thought because she had, has eight grandchildren in the Midwest, far, far away from here, that they would never move here. <laughs> so much for assuming. And, it's an interesting challenge. So that's a part of my identity that I need to create, to define now in the next couple of months. Who am I in the midst of this situation? We'll see. But the exercise that I propose for us today will play into my choices 
about that because I'm going to ask us all to, to get a piece of paper and something to write with and to answer these questions. When somebody asks you who you are, that's really what our topic is today. Who are we? And it's something that we are becoming all our lives. There are certain things that we start out with and we either accept them or reject them. For instance, you know, we're all born to somebody. So we belong to a family with an ethnicity, religion, um, we have siblings, we are someplace in the order of siblings, and we come from a social status that is determined by our family. You know, our social status of origin really is determined by what our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, all the way back perhaps, um, have done with their lives, how they've made a living and how they have, what community they have belonged to. We all have that. We can accept it or we can say, hey, I don't like this and go out and choose another. I was just thinking today about somebody who has lived most of his adult life under a different name than the one he was given at birth. He just felt that his name and therefore his family sounded too ordinary. And so as a young man, he, his origin is French. His original language was French. And he picked for himself a nice English name, Kent. And his family name uh, was B-O-N-E, Bone, which is a little bit unusual in English, but it was the, the English spelling for the pronunciation of his ancestor's French name, Bone. Uh, and he did a little bit of research and found out that in France, before they came to the United States, it was spelled differently. It was B-E-A-U-L-N-E. -E. And so instead of being Jimmy Bone, B-O-N-E, -E, he became Kent Bone, B-E-A-U-L-N-E. -E. And that's been his name for, he's now about 60. That's been his name his whole adult life. But he decided that, okay, I think my family is too ordinary and I want to seem more upper class or something. I want to seem better than my family in some way. And so he changed his name. People do that. I know quite a few people who have changed their names and they pick whatever name they want. They call themselves Fern instead of Alice. Or, you know, I mean, they pick a name that seems to them one that they feel better about than the name their mother gave them. So these things in number one. Can you see the screen? Can you see the... Um, yes, we do. The words. So all of us identify ourselves somehow by either continuing or stopping the identity that we received from our family of origin. Um, my family of origin was mostly Irish, some French, some English, 
but I have to say that the French and the Irish have become what I feel connected to, the parts of my origins that I feel connected to. Religion, I was brought up Catholic. I would say now that I am pretty, I'm universal, I'm really not religious. Um, I'm not Catholic anymore, for sure. Birth order, I am the oldest of a family of five daughters. And it's very interesting that throughout my life, the, the people that I've been very close to have all spoken French and they've all been oldest daughters <laughs> in families with quite a few siblings. Obviously, I identify with that somehow. It shows up in my friends. It's not something that you know I've, I've claimed, but it's part of who I am. So would someone else like to share on just number one questions, who you are? I will. Okay, go ahead. Uh, let's see. My um, ancestors, I guess you might say, were Scotch-Irish, um, English, and a little bit of German mixed in there. And uh, um, my parents' religion was Baptist, and um, I deviated from that. And um, at one point in my life, I went to every every church and synagogue, whatever I could find to try to find the answer of where I fit into the, the religious scope, I guess you might say, or fit into the, uh, and, and I call it spirituality because I think I've always followed somewhat of a spiritual path, maybe not a religious one um, all the time. I am the oldest of six children. Um, I have Aaron and I have friends. <laughs> and I speak a little French. <laughs> uh -huh. Right. Uh, thanks to um, uh, a relationship in, in France that we write back and forth. We have for three years. Um, I have one brother in my profession. It's an interesting question because I adored. I loved the job that I did. From early on, I helped other people find jobs. I taught job skills, um, ethics, a lot of courses about how to present yourself as a job seeker. And I saw a lot of people get jobs to grow in those and to become very happy and to prosper. So I really love that. And I was sitting here thinking, well, what happened to that? <laughs> And, you know, since I've retired, um, I've tried to replace the passion and the love I had for my career uh, with other things. And it's been sort of a hit and miss. You know, I took some writing courses and, and published one little thing in writing and um, taught, uh, substitute taught and... Um, did a lot of volunteer work with theater and uh, children and various things, whatever I could find, because I do like to stay active. And at one point I was taking care of my granddaughter. So um, that's kind of where I am. I guess I'm still searching, <laughs> even at my age, for a new meaning in, in something I'd like to do, um, whether that comprises my background, oh, sorry about that, or, or not, or my previous background, <laughs> oh dear, sorry about that, and, uh, 
let's see what else can i say and i've enjoyed doing things like um coming to the living peace now classes and and learning from there and so right now i'm still learning you know i'm a seeker of truth. um i love nature i love the world i love life and, okay so uh, some of these things are in the next questions oh so you've You've answered question one. Okay. I realized that I stopped before I got to profession. My whole family of origin were mill, mill workers, factory workers in the, the textile mills. And I didn't want to do that. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I stayed in school and ended up with a doctorate. And when you get her doctorate, you end up teaching in a university. So that's what I ended up doing. And I have come back to teaching a couple of times. So I have to say that my preferred occupation is teaching something, anything. <laughs> okay, let's have somebody else. Yeah, I want to hear from other people. I just yeah. love because no one else did. <laughs> I know, and that was good. It gave gave a role model. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I can talk. <clears throat> um, Hamavi, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Uh, for the right now, for the right time, let's say for 2022, uh, who I am, uh, I am um, Muhammad Al Hamawi that I gave, get by birth uh, the identity of Iraqi person. Uh, I lived in war, uh, especially in, in 2003 after the occupation of uh, United States. No hard feeling at all. Um, and uh, I got Islam by family. But at the age of 18, I left Iraq and I decided to like establish myself by myself. By I got a scholarship in Turkey and I studied cinema. That's I the filmmaking, which is that's what I wanted to do. And uh, after like six years, I got like a high degree and I got my bachelorate undergraduate studies and everything. But in this trip, I have decided to change the name that people are calling me because I felt like Muhammad is cool, but is not cool enough for me. And it's not like, uh, it's so common, uh, something close to the, to the friend, the French friend that you told about. So I used Hamawi and everyone is calling me Hamawi. And uh, Islam is like, is not uh, how like most of Islamic, um, let's say monks or people uh, are telling me just about like another, not, not another virgin, but another kind of understanding Islam that I do practice. Uh, and yeah, I am cinematographer, learning cinematography, let's say. At the same time, I have a small uh, business, a uh, new startup. I uh, have been three years working on. It's a, like promotional printing materials agency and part-time traveler that I traveled till now in the last three years, uh, 14 countries. And I, have, and I have one bird that's called Baghdad that makes me feel home when I'm home because it's, its name is Baghdad. And I have a girlfriend that's, she's Turkish from different nationality and it feels me home also. Thank you. Thank you for introducing yourself. Okay, let's have one more person. We don't have to, we can go on to the next question, which is also a question of you know, we receive a, model, a role model, a culture, a language, or two or three. 
when we're born and we begin to live in a family and we get to choose as we go along what other cultures or languages or what level of education do we want? Um, and it's not always easy to make those changes, but we do it. Um, let's see. Tasmia, do you have something to say right now or can I call on you? Yes, ma'am, I want to uh, answer those questions. Okay. Uh, my family. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, my uh, uh, ethnicity is Bangladeshi. I am a Bangladeshi and my religion is Islam. And my uh, I have one siblings uh, who studied, uh, study, uh, study in Bangla medium uh, in science background uh, in class uh, 11. And uh, she's a student and I'm a student as well. And my culture is uh, culture I got from Bangladesh. Uh, that is my culture and my language is Bangla. And my level of education is I am doing my master's in TESOL. And um, I want to be a, uh, my, uh, my personal mission is I want to be a teacher. And my AS of expertise is I uh, I'm learning uh, English for uh, uh, because I want to be a teacher. And I'm learning computer as uh, some works from computer as well, uh, because I want to teach computer language uh, to others as well. Uh, for example, web development web designing and graphic design, those things. Okay, thank you very much, Tasmia. Okay, thank you, so uh, the culture, like I said, uh, my culture basically was Irish Catholic and it, it's not that anymore. And I left when I, as soon as I graduated from university, I left the US and went, moved to France because I was, I could also speak French. Um, I grew up in an area where there were many, many French speaking immigrants from Canada who worked in the mills. And so, you know, I heard French all around me. And when I was 10 years old, we moved and the only place in the new place we lived um, where I could go to school, it was a French speaking school. So I grew up speaking both French and English and it's something that has defined me. It's something that I have chosen to really cultivate and to make a core part of who I am in the world. And like I said, I, I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. And so I kept, I stayed in school and stayed in school and stayed in school and finally got a doctorate. And you really, you got to leave school at that point and you got to do something. And the occupation waiting for you is to be a university professor. So that's what I became. Who else? And I now identify as a teacher. Okay. Uh, Chris. Hello, teacher. Hello, everyone. Uh, regarding for the culture and language. Yes. Uh, my culture is uh, Filipino. Okay. Uh, and uh, I have a uh, half Chinese and half Filipino. My and I'm the all eldest. I have a uh, three language that I speak in the province of where I where I am uh, born. This yes. Is, in the Philippines, I have the three parts of the Philippines, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And I'm living in a Mindanao. I know how to speak uh, my language, Chinese and Visaya. When I was in college, I transferred in Manila. Manila is, uh, this is the city of the Philippines. And I, and another language, how to speak Tagalog. Then when I finish in college as BS midwifery, then oh. I yeah I I finish my BS midwifery. Then I try my 
I try to a uh, new uh, adventure of my life to go to Hong Kong to take care of elderly person because I'm the eldest and I'm the breadwinner. I have a lot of, I have uh, three siblings that and he needs to help. That's why I early at the age of uh, 20 something, I, I grow up by own myself with another country to find uh, money to help my parents. Mm -hmm. Then when I come in Hong Kong, I, I have a lot of struggle because uh, there is a new languages, new culture, how to communicate the persons. Then I know how to speak Cantonese to take care of elderly so that she can, so that I, I know how to take her with the uh, elderly and I know how to learn. Uh, I studied to learn to speak of Cantonese, excuse me, so that I can catch up and communicate every every single day of my life of, of working in, a, in a Hong Kong. Then I, I be, being a being a Christian, a, being a Catholic. Then there's uh, some pastors that he recommended me to join to another religion as a born again Christians, and I'm devoted to be, being a born again Christians. But this is this is the way to to come to Canada to, <laughs> to have a employer, to have a to have employer in Canada have a born again. Because of the, uh, because of maybe the communication or me, maybe or the how can he call religions that he see always to find a good uh, communicate to take care of elderly. That's why I'm here in Canada and I'm so blessed. And I have a struggle, but now I I think I still studying, but in the another course again. But I still a student, and at the same time I'm still working. And I'm I'm so thankful. That's that's it. My this is my uh, uh, experience of a journey of my life. Yes, and you have uh, chosen to be an adventurer. Yes, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so and thankful. Yes, well, it is because there's lots of changes. So when we were talking last week about the strengths that people develop when they become immigrants to different cultures. You have experienced that a lot. I think most of us have experienced it and that's what draws us together. Um, thank you, I appreciate that. Zabi, you've got your hand up. Uh, hey everyone, I was actually born into an Afghan family in Afghanistan. So that's kind of a culture, but Afghanistan is a country which is have neighboring countries like Iran and Pakistan. So Afghanistan is a mixed culture of uh, its own, and some cultures have been transferred from different neighboring countries as well. So that that and I did my school from there, and I know the Pashto language, which is spoken in Pakistan and in Afghanistan. My mm -hmm. mother tongue is that, and my father tongue. So in my schools, I studied Persian and I did my schooling in Persian. So I learned Persian there, two languages. Then I studied a little bit English uh, here and there. So I learned English there. And when I came to India, um, here I learned Hindi and I did my bachelor's in computer science. So then after that, uh, I did my master's uh, in computer science Actually, my family my, uh, actually uh, became refugees from Afghanistan in 2015. So becoming a refugee, then uh, we had to stay here after graduation. Like in July, I finished my master's. And then because I finished my studies and in India, uh, you we had to stay and I had no other option but uh, to apply for visas to other countries, for humanitarian visas and all because we're refugees, we have that option. So. I have learned Hindi here in India, uh, as well as Urdu. I can read Urdu and speak Urdu and read Hindi and speak Hindi. This is, I think, four to five languages I have learned. Uh, and for as, as far as job goes, I recently graduated from uh, computer science. And uh, I'm, I haven't started the, uh, a job yet because as a refugee uh, occupation, its opportunities are less. 
Uh, but at the same time, uh, when I left, I do not want to spend my life uh, indeed like I don't want to waste that. So when I left, I have to learn something. So I take uh, Greek philosophy courses, I take uh, world religion courses, I take different um, like um, like philosophy and ethics, all of these classes, which are really uh, kind of gives me a good perspective in life. And that really has had like this six or seven months, which I'm free and I have nothing to do. I just keep learning. And that has uh, taught me the amount of things that it's like I couldn't learn it, you know, that I don't, I spend my time in learning. I have. So uh, this was about languages and culture and the level of education is, uh, I, I did my master's in computer science and then started a bachelor's in sustainable development. So I'm right. pursuing that, yeah. So this is about me, thank you. Okay, so, so far, we seem to share that we, all of us who have spoken so far, have been willing to leave where they grew up and to learn new languages and new cultures. And that's not true of everybody. It is part of our identity that we have been willing to do that. And so far, those of us who have spoken have also gotten higher education. We have more or less chosen to do that because we wanted to have the ability to do, you know, to do creative things in our occupation in the world. And usually, I mean, sometimes in the arts, apprenticeship is the path to mastery, but often in many paths of life, um, it's a university education. So we have made that choice, which everybody doesn't make. It's interesting what, what we all share, and I'm not sure that we all do because not everyone has spoken, but you know, we will find things that we have in common. Um, okay, so let's go on to question three. Person, personal mission, areas of expertise. Some of you have mentioned that as just being part of everything about you, then that's important. For me, lang languages and cultures, and also oh. philosophy and um, understanding of how the world works and um, how, how everything works, including me <laughs> in the world. <coughs> and it's been certainly true of me throughout my life as it has been true with the ones of you who have spoken that I love learning stuff. And so I keep coming back to learn more about more things. And that's something that I value and that is a very important part of who I am. If I'm not learning, I get bored. <laughs> so I need to keep learning. And that's something really important for me. I do speak about five languages, European languages. My native language, of course, is English. Um, and um, I have enjoyed learning how different cultures work. Obviously, I grew up in a culture on the East Coast of the US. And I have studied French culture, both provincial, regional, um, Parisian, uh, on North, the, the North American continent, the dialects in Canada and Louisiana and in the Midwest. So that's been you know, the whole aspect of what makes community work has also been a fascination of mine. <clears throat> 
and an area of professional expertise. So who else? Who wants to speak to question three? My sense of personal mission, like I say, it really boils down to ultimately to teaching. Teaching anything, I don't care. <laughs> I just like to teach. Um, and I guess my personal mission has always been to help people understand themselves and their culture better and enjoy it. Tasmia, you got your hand up. Yes, ma'am. I want to answer question three. Okay. My personal mission is I love to be a teacher. I want to teach English to my native people, to my uh, Bangladeshi peoples. Um, and my area of, uh, uh, I, as well as uh, besides of uh, teaching English, I want to taught them as well computer, uh, some basic knowledge about computer. That's why I'm learning web development, web designing and graphic designing. And my areas of expertise, uh, ma'am, uh, uh, one, uh, one question, the meaning of expertise uh, is, what the is meaning. the meaning of expertise? Okay, the yes, meaning of expertise. Somebody want to help us out there? Something that you can do very well. Something, okay. you, something you know better than most people. I uh, I think I I am uh, empathetic and I am sympathetic. I uh, you know, ma'am, I saved uh, uh, I saved uh, one of my uh, school uh, sorry one of my university friend from doing suicide from attempting uh, attempting suicide. Uh, she had a relation uh, with her boyfriend and she was depressed and she was upset as well. Uh, and uh, her family is not uh, uh, is not uh, accept accepting her boyfriend. So we, uh, I mean, I, uh, me and my class, other classmates saved her from at, attempting a suicide. So I think I can feel other pain as well, uh, very much. Okay, wonderful. Very well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ma okay, anybody else feel compelled to answer question three? Okay, let's go on to four. Our values and our personal expression. Like for instance, in terms of gender norms, where do we come, you know, where do we fall as individuals? Um, what kind of role do we see ourselves playing in society and in the world? And what value or values do you stand for? Are you, you know, determined to help create in the world? Somebody else lead off this time, not me. Who wants to address that? Sabrina, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay. How about you? How are we willing to help others? And yeah, I mean, you know, the, the role in society, what you stand for, what are your values and your, your way of expressing yourself? Like, um, you know, I have always appreciated, I mean, really in what, uh, uh, like impressed by one of the answers I got from you and it, it got me think along this way. So one day I have asked you, uh, we were in a debate, I remember with uh, our French, t our teacher from Spain, and I had asked you, uh, what would uh, so what is satisfaction for you at this point of your life rosemary or what would make you happy and i quote of course you said uh, after all i you said like that i thought that writing a book would is happiness i thought that changing a job and being professor at university would be happiness 
and I did it. I thought that this, this, this. At the end uh, of the line, you told me uh, it's be at it's being at service of others, and that's really something uh, that we get. Uh, I mean, we get at this point with experience, of course, uh, as we learn and as we teach. And I think that's the point. <laughs> I am not there yet, of course, uh, just I like the idea and this is exactly what I want to feel and embody uh, as idea in the future, working on it. Okay. Who else? Thank you, Sabrina. Welcome. Oh, Sabi, you got your hand up. Go ahead. Mm. Uh, when it this actually uh, when she she quoted you regarding the happiness thing, something came to my mind. Like, in uh, first I'll talk about my values. Uh, uh, like, uh, I was born into a Muslim family, and uh, later when I traveled to India, I actually uh, I am a good person who I'm a person who actually loves to unlearn things. So Islam is a religion which people have different interpretation in different places of the world. So you have to have that mind of evaluation of certain things which has been carried by cultures to the religion and everything. So uh, after living in India, I had access to internet, I had opportunities to learn, as well as uh, my values come from uh, my religion from back in Afghanistan. There are beautiful values there which I carried with me. Uh, like it's like a clash of values when you are living in a place in a village in Afghanistan where when you have something, uh, uh, when you are building a house, you do not call pay someone, you just call your neighbor, you just prepare them food, they work for you for three days for free. That's the, the value which people have in Afghanistan. So when you come to a, a very developed world, you learn another values from there. So I'm, I've learned my values from Greek strike philosophy. I've learned my values from like Aristotelian ethics, beautiful things, you know, from different civilizations of the world. And I'm really actually influenced by Rumi. Uh, yeah. So it's like a, a really, you know, how do how do I say it? It's a, it's a mixture of different values which I've taken. Uh, and when I find beautiful things in, in any tradition, uh, I, I take it, and that's. I think it's a beautiful view of the world to have. So that's about my values, and uh, about happiness. Uh, that the thing which came to my mind was that when we are, uh, when we when we think, harm or, or money will bring us happiness, or or actually uh, one one of these things. It's it's not an end. You know, it's just a mean. So when we are honorable, why we seek honor? First, we seek it from someone, and we want honor because we want to be, at the end of the day, happy. So happiness itself is an, is an end. So this is one thing I wanted to say in your point. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Who else? Hey. Anyone? Yeah, OK. Yes. Uh, okay, so I think I'm missing this. <laughs> uh, when I was a kid, it was so close, it was so clear that uh, because like uh, there was there was a conflict between two Muslim parts. So I thought by media, by creating media and by creating cinema, good movies, that we can avoid this conflict and misunderstanding. So that's why I moved and studied cinema. Uh, but then I found out, no, it's 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 different thing. So I can say now I don't have like like that visual and that aim that I'm living for. But what I'm trying is I'm trying to keep myself. And, and, I, and I think like it's 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 uh, it's really uh, like, let's say, a disappointment period of time when you feel like you cannot change them, the, 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 the world as you were dreaming when you were 16 and 14 right um, it's because of my age like this age when you start to realize like the reality part of life so uh, how old uh, are you just out of curiosity 25 okay 
You're yeah. you're pretty uh, early in discovering yeah. that, but yeah, exactly. That's great. Yeah. So no, I don't have. I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, and you will find that your values and your you know, your concept of your role in society um, will become more clear in the next 15 or 20 years. By the time you're 45, you'll have a pretty clear notion. And but it will be based on, you know, what, what you experience between now and then. The and you, you're on the um, path. It's great. It's it's a bit it's a bit um, like I'm getting afraid of from this because like I'm getting afraid that I will be shaped not by not by by me shaping myself in the next years I will be shaped according to the life and the society how is it shaping and what you, is the need you will be but you need to realize and remember that. Ultimately, you're the one making the decisions. You choose. You always choose. Am I, do I believe that? If I don't believe it, am I going to stand for that? Am I going to play a role that, you know, is that fulfills what society is requiring? Or Am I going to stand up and, and be what I know is right for me, which takes courage? Okay, I will, I will leave this topic right now. Maybe we can talk about it in the, in the end so okay. the others can, can have time to speak. But I really would like to speak about it. Yes, it's, it's an important subject. And it's one that we are constantly creating for ourselves. And there are times when we say, yes, I'm doing this. And then the further we get into it, we realize, oh, wait a minute. This isn't who I am at all. I can't, yeah, keep, exactly. I can't keep doing this. And at some point, we need to say, okay, bye. I'm doing, them. I'm doing this other thing. And sometimes we get punished or sanctioned for separating from what was expected. But it's okay because we always end up um, being much happier when we're, when what we're doing and the role we're playing expresses who we truly are. You know, I mean, I've lost my job because of standing up for what I believed. Um, and I've, I've had a couple of situations like that where, yeah, it was hard. You know, I, I suffered for having chosen to be who I was and to play the role that I wanted, that I felt was me expressing me, but I was so much better off over time being who I truly am. And that's, you know, that's an important thing to become aware of. I, I, would, I would really agree with you, um, but I'm sorry if I, if I will take a bit of time about this, but like, what I feel right now, it's because of uh, the media and like, because it's really, it was my study that I studied communication science and media and filmmaking stuff. It's like every, around every three years or five years, the last 20 years, the last 20 years, two decades, it's, it's, it's like every five years or even every two years, we have a new different kind of thinking new different generation of thinking, new different generation of mythologies and values. Yep. Yep. Like, um, let's say, okay, I'm not going to speak. So I'm not here to like hit or run or anything, but just like 
I'm not here against, but like for, for example, for example, the LGBT that 15 years ago, when anything was speaking about this subject, uh, we weren't speaking using the same words that we are using today. And it's coming that fast that I'm not aware if it's good or not, because it's coming just fast because of Netflix selling and sales amount and production amount. And at the same time, Google, where it gives you more ads about different um, ads. And of course, these companies, I'm in love with them. They are making, a, they are making our life so easy. But here is the idea, like, we are not who we are in the last two years or in the last five years. Like we are changing so fast and big part of us, like we are not talking about 2% of our personality is changing. There is like values are changing, even if it's 2%, but it's, there is a values are changing. So even that I, sometimes I'm stopping and thinking like, but we are not like, if, if I will change and I will stand just by what I think in any different subject, not LGTB, not anything, uh, it will be like, maybe I will be punished as I will be out of the society because the society is getting like, at the same time, ignorance in the different parts. And at the same time, like extremism of something because of how many things they see uh, because of like the social media and like the new generation of communication, the two-way communication. That's so, true. Um, and that's you're why right. I, it's challenging, yes. And if you talk to people who have totally different political opinions than you do, they can use the same words and say the same things that you exactly. would say and mean something totally different. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I agree that, teacher. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, what? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I I I I agree for this. I agree for your explanation here regarding for your uh, danger uh, uh, danger. Uh, how regarding for your uh, society or regarding for your uh, human being? Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes me. Uh, when I was when I was uh, high school. I don't know what is my what who I am. I don't know what is my danger. Uh, uh, how can I say? Uh, uh, sexuality, sex, sex, uh, sexuality of being a person because I'm a girl. But yeah. in in the time that you are uh, college life, you change everything because of the society. You know, uh, you 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 want to see who you are in the in the changes of uh, very, very, how can I, your changes of very, uh, be, uh, how can I explain that? Uh, it's, 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 it's very difficult to explain, but uh, exactly you are the one to uh, express your feelings, who you are. Like, for example, she said LGBTQ. LGBTQ is, uh, for the some people are, she said, criticize them because you don't know what is the meaning of LGBT. You don't know bisexuality, but the, uh, but some people are uh, interesting. What is this meaning of that LGBT like, like me? And it's, it's the best is to do is now uh, uh, you you can you can uh, how can I say I I tried sorry I tried to explain teacher but past first. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I agree. Explain. Hard to explain. Yes, but I mean there are basic principles, like mm -hmm. everyone is a human being. Yes, yeah, the most ever... important teacher, the most important, you help your parents in your yeah. good way. Yeah, everybody. I mean, even th even though you are LGBT or you are a, or a not. Man or girl, yeah. Yes, it's, exactly. It's it's, it's uh, respect. Yes. And, that's it. and love. Yeah. And love is not just romance. And it's not just, um, you know, partner. 
love is is knowing how to relate to the human needs that we all have. Whatever labels people put on us, the labels ultimately, they're labels, they're judgments. And who we are is we are human, we are an, an inhabitant of earth, we are part of this earthly community, and we all need to be accepted, to be understood, to be to belong, and to be to be appreciated for what our skills are and our beingness is. So those are the basic values that it doesn't matter what our identities are. That's those things are always true. And that's not a religion. It's not a culture. It's being, it's being, being conscious, being a conscious entity. So the, the labels, um, I think that deciding that we're bigger than labels is an important adult choice that we can make. That we are not going to put labels on people and just know them as the label. So I don't know how many people on her here are LGBT, LGBTQ, possibly several, but it doesn't matter. You know, um, we we are human beings. Just just to not hurt anyone's feeling. Um, really, uh, it it was just example. So not to to yeah. not make any misunderstanding. Right, 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 it was right. just no, just I... example. That's like. Yeah, I know you get it, but I'm I'm afraid that someone else would get hurted. So just to make it clear, right. it was no, just an example. You, did, because... you didn't no, say no, anything no. negative. No, 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 no. Uh, I like I like the way you explain. I, I appreciate yes. that. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, Thank you. and we're still human beings, and we're valuable yeah. human beings, and we're beautiful, wonderful human beings. Whatever labels people put on us, who cares? So one of the important aspects of saying all these things about ourselves is, yeah, I am all these things. And more importantly, I am universal. I am a participant in the world community, in the universal community. And I respect and honor all participants, even those who to whom people have given labels. Like, for instance, autistic is a label that's pretty commonly used and most people are aware of it today. But it doesn't matter if people label you as autistic because you still want to be loved and appreciated and known and useful and you want to belong. And you have the same challenges of being known and being accepted. Whatever label you have, you know, so if it's a religious label, a an ethnic label, a racial label, a class label, they're all labels and they're judgments. And, you know, they're not real because our reality is we're human. We are 
earthlings. We are spiritual and physical. Doesn't matter religions or language or culture, we're all both spiritual and physical, physical and spiritual. And we have to accept and integrate that, all of that, into who we are to be happy, as we were talking about earlier in this discussion. That's what we all share. So we can have this discussion, even though we all look different and sound different and think different and uh, you know, live in different places and dress differently. We are all human with human needs. And we are one. In our feelings, we all share the same feelings. We have different languages. We have different clothes. We have different ways of doing here. We have different gestures, but we all have the same feelings and we can understand each other that way because we are all spiritual beings with feelings. And peace is about accepting ourselves and accepting each other and accepting other beings and other conscious entities, including the planet, and being concerned for the well being of all. That's peace. It's really very, very simple in a way. And it's also really challenging because we have to keep making decisions. Who am I in this situation? What principles do I uphold no matter what's going on? And no matter what the, the different thinking is right now, what are the basic principles? What is truth? What's real? And even if it takes us a while to realize, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that seemed like an attractive idea, but it's making me violate my basic principles. Whenever you realize that, it's important to say, wait a minute, stop. I need, not just want, I need to keep following what I know is true, what the basic principles are, because otherwise I will not be happy. Very simple. And I probably won't be healthy either or prosperous. So there's also in our identity, number five, a way of being. So like our physical appearance. How do we dress? Uh, Hamawi, <laughs> your yes. dress in the picture that you took. Uh, oh, it's... Yeah, tell us. It, it, it's, it's really an old photo that I was like 15, maybe, the first oh. time that I was going to paintball. And okay. I know why. I don't know why Google just love it and want it to be safe. <laughs> so tell us about what you're wearing. Okay, uh, I do wear outdoor fit all the day, all the time. Even okay. when I have like uh, important meeting with factories or with clients, and even it's like a joke between uh, my friends and the client. Also, like yeah, he came the the cowboy man or the like mountain guy okay uh, i i do like wear that like the 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 jeans is or the, the the pants that has uh pockets on next to the next to knees because okay. i don't like jeans and just like to feel comfortable and like easy to work with 
all the time, right. Right. especially when I'm on the set, when it's like a TV series day, shooting day or movie shooting day. Yeah. And uh, outdoor, like outdoor, outdoor felt fit all the time. Okay. Yeah. So that, that is your way of being, your way of presenting yourself. Exactly. Way yeah. of giving my brand identity, let's say. Yeah, my personal exactly. brand identity. Exactly. And we all have a way of being, of presenting ourselves. I mean, for me, in the United States, during my lifetime, starting in the 1940s, it's been important for professional success to, to conform to a dress code, which means that there were rules for how a woman should dress. And that included wearing skirts and wearing hose, which are stockings and they're clear nylon stockings. And that was true for 40, 50 years. And it was so uncomfortable. I never wanted to dress like that. So <laughs> there actually have been times when I was offered jobs in the university, jobs that were administrative, you know, I would be a dean or a department head. And I would have to wear that costume. And I said, no, thank you. I'm not gonna be miserable every day to do a job that I didn't set out to do anyway. I wanted to be a teacher. <laughs> and to be a teacher, I didn't have to dress that way. To be a teacher, I could wear pants and you know, reasonable clothes, but not a dress. So, you know, that actually influenced what I did in the academy, in the university. Certain jobs I could do dressed comfortably, and I was, I was willing to do those. So teaching and some administrative work, I was a department chair. I was a, um, an official who helped people to get grants for different projects, research projects. But when they wanted to promote me in that job and make me the grant person for the whole university instead of for one college, <laughs> Again, I would have had to dress up as an official and I just didn't want to do that. So I didn't. That, those were choices that I made along the way. I wanted to be comfortable and I wanted to be able to relate to the people that I was teaching or managing so that we could be a team. I didn't want to wear a costume that showed uh, a higher level. You know, I didn't want to be hierarchical. That's an important value for me. So <laughs> I chose my way, but based on what I had to wear into and out of different jobs along the way. Crazy, okay, but that was me. Um, your, your sense of self in the world, your way of being spiritual or physical or relational in regards to others, or do you want to be a leader? Do you want to work behind the scenes to make things happen? Do you want to be the person that makes people feel comfortable? Personally, I've always been, I've always had ideas, you know, visionary ideas. And when I have gotten an idea, I've had skills that 
couldn't make them happen. So I have taken leadership roles consistently, which means sometimes I've had to say, no, I'm not doing that. I'm doing this. And leadership implies that people are willing to follow me. And they have been. Uh, so that's been my way of being in the world. I've always been very tuned in to nature, to culture, to um, ways of being, to how people feel. So I've been kind of intuitive rather than linear. I can be logical. That's not my first way of being. So those are other things about me answering questions five, six, and seven. And I invite everybody to answer questions, those questions about yourself. Think about it. I've been thinking about it now for weeks because we've been studying this book on identity. And it really has made me aware of how complicated our identity can be and, you know, how we relate to it. And it's important to be conscious, to be aware of who we, who and how we choose to be and then be accepting of ourselves in those choices. So next week, we're going to start working with chapter four. This, this book has very long chapters. And chapter four is a set of behaviors, a set of choices, considering choices that we get to make along the way to create our identity. It's something that's up to us to create. So think about these questions as you go through this week. And next week, we'll talk about things like We'll talk about how we shape our lives based on the choices we make. So thank you all for being part of this discussion.